Welcome back to week 13 of the Hearthstone Global Games, where I've now been joined by APAC Dad, Mr. Neil Larinderbond. How are you doing, Neil? Yeah, good start to the day for APAC people. Uh, going to need to be a good one, though, for the Philippines. They're, they're going to get into it. But Korea also counts the APAC region. We're good today. Yeah, yeah, well, you're, you're, you're right in your element with, uh, with what we're about to be seeing, I think. As you say, Philippines got a long way to go if they're going to get through, but as far as, as Korea go, they just need to take this one and they're through to stage three. Yeah, as long as they do better than Argentina tomorrow or later on, so just see how that one pans out. But yeah, it's looking good for most of the APAC region. It's been interesting to see how they have come together as, as the team started off. They've improved so much with all this world-class opposition they've been up against. Yeah, and, and don't forget, as we were just mentioning, how it could get a little bit messy there if they don't do as well as Argentina. They probably get through regardless because uh, the, the best third places do go through. So as long as there aren't loads of three-way ties, right. then it's fine. But uh, Yeah, the, the maths geek on Reddit, which is Relox, shout out to him. He does all the Reddit number crunching. Basically says if you go two wins and a loss and you've got a plus two games difference, he did loads of simulations and that was basically enough a wow. huge percentage, like over 99% of the time. If you go one win and two losses and you're worse than minus three, you're in deep, deep trouble. Okay. They're, they're like the boundaries that you want. Philippines, Waning Moon, Karakute, Chalk, Stas, South Korea, Kranich, Handsome Guy, Flurry, Dione. Who stood out to you in this tournament, Neil? In this particular tournament, I think Dione's been interesting. He's brought some <laughs> unusual decks. But that whole team, his Ravens pick for the tournament is pretty ridiculous as we see yet another exquisite look at another country that isn't the United Kingdom. Is Dione bringing Warrior? That is the question that that I want answered right now after what we saw uh, was it last week with the Tempo, Nazoth, the Hemet? Yeah, he is not, but he's oh. bringing Warlock, so who knows? Ah. Look at these magnificent temples and stuff here in Korea as well as more busy suburban areas as well. Kind of urban areas in fact. Yeah, kind of Jealous of all these places. They just have lots of different looking places, unlike us. Anyway, so let's not get too salty over our own homeland. Let's take a look at the Hustle Global Games format. Best out of five, all nine classes distributed between the four players. One player has three classes on each team. They're going to get to play a second time if we get to the fifth game in the best out of five. But it's a blind pick. The players decided in advance what order they want to play, which two classes they pe got paired together. They're shown their opponent's two classes, and then they decide which one they want to bring. So Waning Moon decided to bring Paladin. Kranich decided to bring Priest against each other's other decks. Yeah, I was at Kranich in this first game. Pretty excited by waiting to see Kranich play. I thought I'd go through some of his feedback in the feedback form. Kranich, where do you like to go when you're not playing Hearthstone? I don't go anywhere. All I do is play Hearthstone. Thanks, Kranich. Thanks for that feedback. Well, that's something that a lot of the Hearthstone players have in common, to be fair. We were just talking earlier about Diggin. Some of the, the information I got about him is that all he does is play Hearthstone. Speaking of playing Hearthstone, here are some images of some people playing Hearthstone. Kara Cute there on the far left looking ready to go, full spirits. Yeah, the whole of this team has got together every single week. They know they're up against it this week, but they've still got together, they're still playing from the same location. And I think that's been one of the highlights of the event for me, is watching the Philippines team, you know, in it together, win or lose. And especially when they win, they go completely crazy together. They do. We saw Malaysia going crazy earlier. Let's see what we can see uh, in just a moment as we're going to start game number one. Philippines on the Paladin versus victory. Korea on the Priest. At least Priest. So uh, this one, settle down, guys. Could be a long one. Uh, Grimscale Chum does not necessarily mean this deck is all in either. We've seen Anixias, we've seen Death Wings, we've seen all that. And so even though it gets a fast start, the Paladin, it can just keep churning out good stuff the entire game and the priest can deal with a lot of that stuff it's very hard to call a paladin all in nowadays exactly as you're saying because paladin is just able to keep getting more stuff thanks to the curator you can the paladin can draw even more things as time goes on um twilight drake not actually a card we commonly see in priests at all we saw a priest just earlier on today a control priest with some dragon zim but we didn't see any twilight drake that's um indicative of a of a very dragony style priest yeah, and it's going to drag on quite extensively, I suspect, with that Elise in the deck for doing the same thing that all decks seem to need to do now, is find that extra mid-game push for more things in the deck and for more threats, because one of the things in the modern game now is decks don't just finish how they start anymore. You generate more threats as you go with Glyph, with Elise, with cards along those lines. Yep. Um, cards like... 
uh, primordial drake don't generate more cards, but they generate big hand sizes. And so people are finding more and more ways to get an early one drop to get the game going, but also to keep that going throughout the whole game. Speaking of early one drops, though, let's just take a look at Waning Moon's hand here. Three one mana Murlocs. He's kind of just got his pick of the litter now. Yeah, I'm interested in how he goes about this. Obviously, you want to go with the chum, but not into a North Shark Cleric. Shit. Double Vile Fin just feels like it's asking for trouble. Vile Fin Chum's asking for one to get potioned. They have no idea what sort of priest they're up against, which can matter. So I feel we might not even see the coin here. He may just delay and see how, it, how things progress. Yeah. That's a good point. Lots to consider playing around against the priest. I hadn't considered Potion of Madness, but that would have been a complete disaster for Waning Moon. I like just playing the one Inquisitor here. Ideally, they can get the Grimescale Chum to buff up the Bluegill Warrior right. and play that next turn and get rid of the Cleric immediately. Now, this is the thing that new players are too scared of sometimes, is playing that Inquisitor into the North Shire Cleric and letting your opponents get that one card. Mm -hmm. It's one card. You don't want them to have it, but now we can get rid of the North Shire Cleric and progress with life. It also uses up their entire turn, just drawing a card and just healing it up. And now, yeah. Wing Moon has a few options. He can just coin out the Murloc Wall Eater get the guaranteed quick kill on the North Shire Cleric. That does seem does seem strong. Yeah, keeping that board intact, keeping back the blue gill for much needed removal. Paladin doesn't have much outside of its weapons. It doesn't need much because it has these really annoying Murlocs, but yeah, it tends not to have enough removal. So keeping the blue gill for a bit of removal is often very handy, especially going to a priest on turn three, which can have a three, four, which you can now kill with the blue gill. So Shadowward Pain looks likely. Yeah, you need to get rid of that war leader. Um, then you've got to decide whether you want to play your North Shore Cleric. You do because you think your opponents have set up killing the first one with this war leader and yeah. probably not expecting to have the blue gill as well. Yeah, so you don't play around. Huh, they did. You don't play around the second war leader, I was going to say. And Actually, was the, was the. Hang on, hang on. Was the war leader top decked? It was. Okay, so they know there's another answer in hand then. Oh, okay, because of the setup earlier. Yeah. Very good spot there. It's just the Wall Eater ended up being a better setup, a better answer. Yeah. So Philippines played that instead, but that Blue Gear Warrior is just going to have to sit there and do nothing. Oh, I doubt that, that South Korea would expect Blue Gear Warrior specifically. It's not a card that you see in many of the right. uh, Paladin decks at all. Also, keeping it in hand means this Twilight Drake is going to be bigger next turn, so it's not much of a waste. Uh, quite often with your second North Shire, you don't want to just throw it onto the table and get it killed anyway. Uh, you'd rather play it when something's already injured in the mid-game to draw yourself some more cards guaranteed. And it shows that Waning Moon does have some uh, mid to late game potential here because he is running the Stonehill Defender. These aren't the best best set of picks though. Wicker Flame Burn Bristle, not too relevant against Priest. I think you have to pick the Drake. Drake is okay against Priest. Yes, it is. For attack and it's dragonness. There you go. I'll put my pound in the, <laughs> the priest swear jar right now. Yeah, it just is a point we do have to keep making. If new people are watching and priests find it incredibly hard to deal with four attack minions. So they would pain. Nope. Death. Nope. Dragon fire potion. Nope. That won't do it either. Yeah, basically unkillable except by trading, which is why we got cards like Twilight Drake in the priest deck mm. to try and sort of fill that gap in. It also just helps out in the mirror slightly. Right, so Kranich can take his time here. There's no immediate threat of anything really coming off, you know, off the hand. The worst that could happen to them would be, what, a Megasaur? Yeah. Yeah. Shadow of Death, that. Yeah, Megasaur is kind of a problem if it if it gives the attack buff on the Valve Inquisitor because then one Shadow of Death wouldn't wouldn't quite be good enough. Lots of options but, here to take it slowly if they want. Um, and you've got to consider the Megasaur too, because if you take Twilight Drake and then they have a Megasaur and then get Poisonous, then that's a problem because you just lost your minion for free. Priest of the Feast looks like a good middle ground. It's not the most valuable card in this matchup. It's interesting. I wonder if he's playing here a little bit around a true silver champion and just putting down the thing that's a 3 6 instead of a 4 6 so that if the champion comes down, the clear happens. Um, you can just play the 4 6 instead of the 3 6, sure. basically. It's not going to be true silver champion, though. It's going to be Blessing of Kings. And now there's a 5 3 on the board that may have to be Shadow Word Death. Although, with the Dragon Fire Potion pickup, Kranich may consider just biding his time, maybe playing Nether Spy Historian. I actually wonder if that encourages him to play the Death, because now he's not so scared of Megasaur. Okay. Because uh, he has that Dragon Fire Potion. And even Tyrion, sure, it doesn't die to the, the Dragon Fire, but you make a big hole in his head. Hang on a sec. Not such a cleric. Is he going to heal up the Stonehill Defender? 
Because that's that's certainly a possibility. You play the Nether Sight Historian, you play the right. Monster Cleric, you, you get the draw, and then the next turn you just Dragonfire Potion. Draconid Operative seems like a snap pick, and indeed it is. He's just taking a moment to make it not look like a snap pick. Yeah, that's about as, as much of a snap pick as you get in the Hearthstone Global Games. So both these two going to war over long-term value. And one of the keys will be that Elise we saw earlier on. Uh, if she can get it played and get that pack into the deck with Shadow Visions going on, that's a huge amount of value that South Korea can have. So South Korea, are like the Philippines are playing the long game because they've got Tyrion. South Korea are playing the super long game because right. they have the best of it when it gets to turn 25 or something. All right, Granich goes with your play. He does end up playing the Shadow of Death. Going to save that Dragonfire Potion, try and use it a little bit later. Um, yeah, priests, especially with Draconid Operative, they're pretty good at playing the super long game. They're pretty good at taking resources from their opponent's deck and outlasting them. They won't be able to get Tyrion with the Draconid Operative. And that's important, because if you can just keep getting Tyrions from that card, then you just win the game. <laughs> Strange that, isn't it? Strange how getting one of the best games in the game and stealing it from your opponent to equalize the yeah, situation turns out. Pretty funny. Pretty big coincidence. We're going to buff a okay, blue girl. coming in a bit later than we expected, but buffing up a blue girl, there's two shots at it out of three, so definitely I, a, a valuable play. I was surprised that Waning Moon didn't play the Inquisitor first to guarantee the proc on a blue girl warrior, but I uh, guess he I, wants to play that to, to generate lots of minions later on before Omega. Yeah, I feel that this is enough board for them. Okay, there's Potion. Yeah. It's one of the most powerful cards against Paladin. <laughs> Fits the curve nicely too. Ooh, let's take a look at my opponent's deck to find favor. Finish. There's a divine favor in there. Yeah, okay. Divine favor works so horribly with the likes of Tyrion and Drakes and such like that. I doubt there's actually that much heavy game in here. Yeah, that's got to be pretty much it. And now South Korea, with the with the knowledge that there is a divine favor, will probably try and keep their hand from getting out of control. They're not going to want to give Waning Moon too many cards if possible. So. Maybe try and keep maximum of five or six cards seems like the way to go. Yeah, it seems reasonable to me. Ah, so your Defender also doesn't synergize that well with Divine Favor. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, maybe it is just so they've got some extra play against some of the more or, you know, long-term decks like Taunt Warrior, which just can't empty its hand. Maybe they're not using it to empty their hand and refill. Maybe they're using it just to get two or three cards against some of their not-so-fun matchups. Carnage, of course, is in China. He is yet again qualified for a championship event in Hearthstone. He's already been to two World Championships. Now he's gone to Shanghai to play in the Spring Championships. He's hogging all the spaces. He really is. It's like a 15-man event when Kranich is about. Going to be bringing Murloc, Paladin, Quest Rogue, Agro Druid, and Secret Mage to, uh, yeah. to Shanghai. Yeah, Kranich will just play what Kranich needs to play on the day, and that's how he sees the meta. Um, there's a lot of different things going on there. That, of course, is available on this channel over the coming weekend. Yeah. They'll be battling it out for the spring title. And I'm going to go out there. I'm not going to sit on the fence and say it is the most stacked lineup we have ever had for that event. And I've insulted some of the past contenders. I am sorry, but this lineup is ridiculous because all four regions got some of their best players through. Yeah, I completely agree with you. I mean, just from the first playoff, the European ones, you could see from the quality of that lineup that it was going to be a great event, and it just kept getting better and better. As we were saying earlier today, mammoth week of Hearthstone coming up. Two days of HGG with six series per day, and then HCT this weekend. But back to the game. There's that cleric they've been saving for so long, and it's going to work so well with this Twilight Drake. Uh, just a case of where they're scared of Equality Consecration, but they've seen that Divine Favor, mm -hmm. which means that Equality Consecration is less likely, because you don't want those cards sitting around in your hand. Yeah. I think with what, what, with what Kranich has seen, he's, he can pretty much count Equality out. Um, he now does have the chance of grabbing a Tyrion with clear, clear, Curious Glimmer Root, because that doesn't just fetch from cards remaining in the deck, it fetches from any card that started in the deck. And that, okay, well, there you go. Now he can roll Equality out 100%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <smile. laughs> and he knows it. He's very pleased to see that. I think he would already have worked it out, but the confirmation yeah. is always nice. <laughs> uh, that means they can start making a big board with this. And Philippines, though, they will have the power of Tyrion coming up. But just a little issue with running out of steam. They might need to get this Megasaur on the go to clear up this board as soon as they can. Yeah, I mean, Megasaur looks pretty good right here. You're buffing five Murlocs. What do you want to hit? Health looks 
okay. Poisonous looks okay. Wind Fury, Death Rattle, they both look very soft. I think the Wind Fury might not be good enough here because your prime problem is the board. Yeah. I don't think you're going to kill this priest anytime soon, so maybe go for the plants. Yeah. Plant seems good. It's also insurance against a dragon fire right. motion. Waning Moon could just go face with everything and then let Kranich do the clearing, and he'd have to work really hard to, to clear up the. <laughs> that was fast. It's the noise that plants make. Is it? When they're applied to Murlocs, apparently. Maybe uh, maybe Dan's corpse flower makes that sound. Yeah, I don't know. I've not got near enough one for that smell, to be honest, to really find out what noise it makes. Oh, a second Dragonfire Potion is going to be very handy for Kranich. Yeah, and one thing they can do here is just bump into some of these Murlocs and fill the board up and then just Dragonfire nearly everything away anyway. They'll have one or two things to face. But... Yeah, I think they can They can leave the board with f four plants for Waning Moon. But right. don't forget, Dragonfire Potion does not hurt Jackanid Operative. So Kranich will also have a big minion still on the board. As long as he trades the Cleric yeah, he and also... the Glimmer Root into the minions that have more attacks so that he conserves the Operative's health. They can also draw another card as well. Um, yeah. They'll try not to use that Shadow Visions. They will try and save that for the Elise pack later on. Mm -hmm. uh, this sort of deck has to be as greedy as it can. Otherwise, things just... The wheels fall off, basically. Okay, yeah, that's a perfect way of doing it. I wonder if there could be a Mind Control in this deck for Kranich. There definitely could. There may not be, but it's definitely a card that might lurk in here. There may be a Medivh, but probably not, because it looks more of a Dragon-centric deck as well. But Mind Control, even in the Dragon-centric ones, is something that, that some of the players have been toying with through the weeks. And if there is a Mind Control, Kranich is going to want one as soon as possible to get rid of these Tyrians. As, uh, look how low his health is getting. Already down to 15 with a Tyrion on board. 15 health, but does have that gluttonous ooze ready to gobble up and give five armor back so not a total emergency this first Tyrion the second Tyrion however may be a bit more of a problem so is this the turn to play the shadow visions maybe grab a shadow of death and, uh, and just deal with the Tyrion yeah I think they might have to they don't want to so they will look for other options but I think they may have to they've got a fairly they will feel they've got a fairly decent position here if they can get rid of Tyrion and if there is a mind control, so say say Shadow Visions comes up with Shadow of Death or Mind Control or another card, which one does Kranich pick? Probably the Death and then play the Ooze and just get the board back. Just for the instant clay, yeah. Again, they don't know about that second Tyrion that's lurking around the corner. Hang on a second, what? Right, they're happy. That seemed like a uh, pretty weak Dragonfire potion to me. It dealt with a few 1-1s one and popped but, up the shield. Sure, but that's actually enough, right? Because the, the danger was the extra four damage. Going down to nine is like, meh. Yeah. We're going to kill Tyrion next turn. Um, have more chance of drawing into the Shadow of Death, which yeah. protects our Shadow Vision. And there's never nine burst damage, right? Like, they sometimes right. have Blessing of Kings. They sometimes have, sometimes have True Silver Champions. That's eight. There's never nine. Not only that, but they've got to deal with the board to stop Tyrion just dying to it. And also, you draw one more card. It doesn't have to be the Shadow of Death. It can be any spell which makes your Shadow Visions more likely to find the Shadow of Death. Right. So, yeah, they, they looked for another way to do it, and they found one. So, Primordial Drake, worth considering here. Gets rid of the Grimescale Charm, allows you to trade Tyrion into the 5-6, then use the Ashbringer to deal with the 3-4. But do you want to be trading here in Waning Moon's position? We've established this is a very aggressive deck. Maybe he just needs to push face. And play another Tyrion? Yeah, I mean, why not? Yeah. Tyrion and Tyrion 2. Then again, if you've placed the second Tyrion, that Glutinous Ooze could essentially deal with both weapons. If Kranich can trade into both Tyrions and then play the Ooze to get rid of the second Ashbringer, then... Okay, well, they've seen two both Dragonfire potions, so... Sure, yeah, okay. That works for me. There's the Elise yeah. that South Korea have been waiting for. I still don't know if Shadow of Death may end up being better than, than an extra pack here. Just because of this ooze, I feel that Shadow of Death's actually okay. But they're going to be okay-ish. Okay, -ish. okay -ish. Shadow of Pain going to do some pretty good work here, getting rid of one of these minions that have a lot of health. True Silver Champion. Yeah, that's health game. My eyes were drawn to that as well, but Consecration also very handy against not necessarily this turn, that's the but problem, turns though. in the future. That's the problem. Like, are you taking for this turn or are you taking for turns in the future? I think there's definitely strong arguments for both. I feel that this turn you're playing the Ooze anyway. Yep. 
So do you need that true silver next turn? What cards might your opponent play next turn that you want to deal with compared to... And there's a healthy reminder of this Divine Favour. If they Divine Favour us now, so they do take the Consecration in case the board gets reloaded with Murlocs. So South Korea think they've stabilised and they're getting there, but Tyrion number two. Well, there's the Divine Favour. It's going to be drawing two cards this turn if played, though. Doesn't seem... Quite good enough. I just, no, I it's just too Tyrion, slow. Tyrion number two just looks better. Yeah, there's no immediate obvious way it can be dealt with. Should I hmm. just trade in the two five into the uh, weak dragon at operative? Drop down a six six with divine shield and an ashbringer. Korea will be annoyed they've not found a spot to get this Twilight Drake down. They've just been under a little bit too much pressure. There were a couple of turns early on where they could have played it down, but I think they're a little bit scared of equality. It's been in the hand this entire game, I think. You're right, afraid of cards that didn't end up being in the deck. The Power Shield seems like a okay way to start this turn. Yeah, let's go check to make sure, because they're going to want to try and save mana for Elise. Ooh, are we going for a pack? And so they've got to add everything up to make sure it's okay. Are we going for a pack this turn, then? I, must I mean, if you don't do it now, when do you do it, I guess? When, maybe we can get a second glut in the Something that happens with Lay on Hands a lot is actually if you don't play it on a slightly risky turn, you never play it, and then you never get to get the whole benefit of all the health yeah. gain and all the cards. Well, you got what you wanted. Are we opening the pack this turn? We can't actually use any of the cards. Well, yeah. Notice they power word shield last. You don't normally draw last, but they didn't want to draw the pack. Exactly, yeah. Um, if they did, they wanted to draw a second pack, not just not just one. They could have power word shielded, however, before playing the Elise, which would have given them a chance of drawing um, a different spell out of the way just to enhance their chance of finding it with the Shadow Visions. Right. That's true. Though with only 12 cards left in the deck, it was probably quite likely, regardless. Um, well, you could go the other way and say, with only 12 cards left in the deck, they're more likely to draw one spell and clear it all up. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. They're playing this really well, though, tidying up the board over and over again, making absolute greediness of their resources. Remember, you and I were thinking they might have to use that Shadow Visions earlier to get the Shadow of Death. They found a way to scarily look after that situation, and that's gained them a pack. Whether that's enough? Yeah, I don't know. A Shadow of Death would look pretty handy here. Primordial Drake going to come down and just put a wall in the way of that Tyrion. Priest of the Feast could be very handy soon. Uh, if we get to a point where maybe this board's a little bit more stable, you could Priest of the Feast, then play the pack and just heal a lot of health back up. Yep. Of course, now that they've been greedy with this Twilight Drake, it's going to be an absolute monster when it does hit the table as well because of this pack. Um, but we don't know how much it would have impacted the board before that. Right. Divine Favor definitely going to take advantage of the Ungoro pack. If Waning Moon could just hold off on it a little bit longer, maybe play the True Silver Champion and the Blessing of Kings, wait for Kranich to build up his hand more and then draw basically the rest of Waning Moon's deck. Looks like the way he's going to go. Clearing the whole board nicely here. South Korea needs an answer for that Tyrion right now. Whether it's Shadow of Death, whether it's a Valspine Slayer from the Ungaro pack, there are a lot of possibilities here, but Kranich needs one of them. He knows there's no equality in the deck, or actually no, nothing in Waning Moon's deck right. that he can grab from the operative to clear up the Tyrion. <coughs> so I think he just has to start by playing the pack. Needs a taunt, needs some removal, needs anything like that. Yeah, otherwise it's just going to be close to over, especially that Divine Favor going to find a Spite Ridge Steed or whatever they're using, Blessing of Kings. I wonder if he's considering playing Priest of the Feast first. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. They need a lot of health here. Uh, they may have a good idea that Divine Favor is in hand by now as well. That tends to be the card that lurks at the end of everything. It's so risky, only four mana left to play whatever you draw. Ah, golden legendary. Uh, Molten Reflection is going to have to be the play. Yeah. Look at that! Three legendaries in that pack. I wish my packs were like that. Yeah, tell me about it, right? King Mosh, Swinging Dread, Sherazen. Sure. 
plenty of big stuff there and a corpse flower. Right, 17 damage total from Waning Moon there with Consecration and True Silver Champion. Four off lethal. Important insert there. The King Mosh battle cry destroys all of the damaged minions and Tyrion is currently a damaged. Good spot there from the production boys and girls. Yeah, you're right. King, King Mosh could actually be pretty impactful in this game. <laughs> Although that is... That is a big hand from Philippines with the divine favor, as I'm sure Kranich was afraid of. Yeah, and... Now remember that consecration you said earlier that Kranich should have yeah. picked up, and he did pick up. Uh, looks like he is going to be rewarded for that play, as most of these cards have two health or less. Yeah, as long as he can get rid of the Tyrion, which he can. Iphanai's interesting. Noble Sacrifice seems good as well. In fact, all of these, as always, Repentance also seems good because you do have Tyrion. Making sure they use all that weapon in case Tyrion gets killed. As well as the fact it protects their board in a massive way. Not looking at all good here for South Korea. And like you said earlier, this, this Paladin deck just keeps on threatening. If that Consecration dealt one more damage, then this would be a very different looking boards here. It's not King Dread not going to do anything whatsoever. King Mosh would actually also deal with the Priest of the Feast and that's the problem. Glimmeru into right Spite Ridge Steed. That's the out. Okay. I think. The oh no! There is a <coughs> certain irony to that pickup. Is there any way they can save this? Wait. Wait, wait. 3.13. No, they couldn't quite. I was saying Consecration would have actually put them to 13, but because the buff went on to the Hydrologist, uh, Philippines take a 1 0 lead. Yeah, Team Philippines looking pretty happy there as Waning Moon piloted that power into victory, but still a long way to go for them. Um, we'll see what's coming up next. I believe it's going to be Handsome Guy versus Kara Cute. Yep. Contrasting names are there, quite amusing to <laughs> me. Um, but yeah, handsome, handsome guy, guy. Kara, cute. It's going to be the Paladin versus the Druid. Apparently I'm reading backwards today for some reason. Druid versus the Paladin. Sure. Um, yeah, we've seen plenty of that. Kara, cute. Her daughter, when Kara, cute, wins fireside gatherings, is happy because she can have more dinner, apparently. I don't know if Kara's like starving her child when she doesn't win firesides or what, but... I don't think it's quite like that. I, I think we really need to, especially if Philippines do get through to the next stage, I think we really need to see see a photo because I keep getting told about Kara Cute's little girl. She's nine years old, apparently. She's adorable. It's kind of unfair that we're, we're you know, not, not being allowed to see this. Yeah, I think it's probably best, though, that way. Yeah. Um, handsome guy, on the other hand, he has just been another Korean player who went to BlizzCon. Uh, last season coming second, first, and first in the championship events. Just another one. Just just three championship events. Are Koreans good at Hearthstone, Neil? They're good at everything. Oh, that's fair. Uh, Korean esports, yeah, especially with the likes of StarCraft, have been gigantic, basically the forerunners of all of esports. I think Korea is considered the home of esports, pretty much. When you watch the Koreans playing StarCraft with the reflexes, I, honestly, I don't know how they do it. That's not even necessary with Hearthstone, though. Like, as far as I'm aware, there's very few situations where you actually need resources to play Hearthstone, yet still, they manage to come out on top. I've seen Strive Crow one time trying to APM um, a Nosdomo, where he had to basically play it and then click and turn at exactly the right time to try and give his opponent as minimum time as possible, and he fluffed it. It was great. He just... There were just buttons everywhere and fingers and things. And because of what you said, I found it hilarious. Because like, he used to play StarCraft. Right, I was right. expecting him to just... But no, he just went, ah! And there was just fingers all over the Buttons and mess. fingers everywhere. I, not exactly a scene that I'd like to picture. No, I guess it didn't end too well. Again, just a look at that matchup there. It is going to be the Druid and the Paladin. Paladin being played rather a lot, but Druid being played more when now, it comes to Shanghai. And then, yeah, and Druid, I, I feel like you finally won this war, Neil, this war since since the, the start of the Ungaro expansion. Jade Druid versus Token Druid, which is better. It looked like it was Token yep. Druid for a long time, but now the Jade Druid has properly put their foot down and said, nope. We are the best. We are the superior Druid deck. There are more players bringing J Druids to Shanghai than there are Token Druids. Yeah, I definitely won that one. Uh, okay, so joking aside, 
It's about what you need on the day, and Metas have slowly drifted in tournament play towards control, and Druid is the control beater. And with Rogue being rebalanced recently, I think Jade Druid is just going to get stronger, personally. Yeah, I don't, I don't believe that's happening until after Shanghai. It's not. So no. it, won't, it won't have affected that part, but that's something that will affect stage three of the Hearthstone Global right. Games, at least the, the last few weeks, I imagine, and, and the finals. So it will, be, it will be fun to see how that changes things as time goes on. Uh, but you're right, Jay Druid is only going to get stronger. I mean, the, the official announcement did say they're expecting this to allow more control decks to, like, to grow, to flourish because Rogue is keeping some of them out of the meta. But if control decks grow and flourish, then Druid is just going to grow and flourish as the counter to those control decks. Again, in my opinion. Jade Druid just going to flourish even more, yeah? You're absolutely right. Jade, Jade's just going to blossom. I said this to Dan earlier. It's a long day already, Neil. We, we, don't, we don't need this. We don't need this. <laughs> um, so Handsome Guy won HCT 2016 Asia Pacific Spring Championship. Is that right? Uh, he won two of them. He won two of them? Yeah, I think he won Spring and Summer, which is why Yulsit got through, because he lost in the final. But Handsome Guy wasn't allowed to go twice for some reason. So they said, well, you, you better go instead, Yulsit, because somebody's got to. Wow. So, and Flurry, actually, on this team, lost to Yulsit. And he's the only guy on this team who hasn't been to, to the World Championships. And he was obviously one game away. Sort of let the side down, really, Flurry. His time will come. Yeah, I'm sure it will. I'm sure uh, it will. Meanwhile, Kara Cute placed ninth in APAC Winter. Yeah, missed out on tiebreakers. Recently, well, not recently anymore. Recently, what I wrote, wrote this, but won Zotac America, defeating P787 in the finals. With honor. So um, she has a lot of tournament pedigree herself. Like you said, she's always at the lambs, lands. She's always earning, earning some sweet dish for her daughter. Her daughter definitely likes it when her mum wins these firesides. Okay, we've got Jade Druid, and we're taking on a slow paladin. South Korea playing Elise in every deck today. <laughs> Elise, not a card you regularly see. It's getting a new Elise paladin. of life. It's getting a new Elise of life, yeah. Uh, oh, dear. <laughs> I don't. I don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> but what? What? Innovate. Wild growth. Nourish from Kara Cute's hand. This looks like a. This is lined up very well for her. If she could see what she was up against, she would keep this entire hand. Yeah. Just go wild growth, then get the nourish going. Play the Jade of Behemoth. But as it is, just going to keep that mana ramp. And she actually won't mind this hand. It needs to develop, but. The Wrath should take care of a difficult Murloc early, is how she'll be seeing this. And then you pick up one, and so will that. And then you pick up just one big minion and off you go. That is indeed a hungry crab. Yeah, she'd be happy with this hand, I think, regardless of knowing what South Korea's hand looks like. Hungry crab is great against the aggressive decks and everything else is good against the control deck. She's got time to ramp up. Hungry crab will, it doesn't matter what pile on deck it is, Hungry crab will eat up a hydrologist at some point. Wonder if she will coin into Wrath here. Um, I'm wondering that well, she has it because um, th there might not be time to, sorry, wild growth, yeah. Because yeah. there might not be time to play that wild growth going forward. But because there's no one drop, she's absolutely fine just taking the time. And Essentially, all she needs is Gadget and Auctioneer, and she wins this game now. Yeah. If she, if she can hold on to these Innovates and Coin, which I expect she will, she has a very low value hand. When she picks up the Auctioneer, it's just game over. It's, it's kind of disappointing that she didn't keep the Nourish because it looks like she's going to need it. But you just can't afford to keep it against the more aggressive decks. Right, I mean, you're just getting, you know, bashed in the face by Murlocs, which is, is not a pleasant experience for anybody. And you just can't, like you say, afford to keep that opening hand. Now, if nothing happens here, and it looks like nothing will happen, then the Philippines are going to have some decisions to make. I think Handsome Guy may have considered the Dirty Rat there, as the Philippines kept two cards and haven't played them. Right. Like, what are they? Probably Auctioneer? I don't know. It wouldn't be Auctioneer. It, it, they probably know one of those is Innovate, actually. Yeah, they played the other one, which was Wild Growth. You're right. There aren't really any big cards in the... Uh, big minions in the Jade Druid deck. Yeah, there's Primordial with Drake. Now. Auctioneer, but that's about it. Yeah, sorry to cut you off a little bit there. That's a big giveaway they don't like their hand. Instead of using the hero power to kill that 1-1, one, one, they've wrathed it. Yeah. Which means that South Korea can legitimately now make the read that Kara Cute hasn't got anything to do. And if she coins out this Jade Blossom, 
which she may well do because it will give her six mana next turn and the turn after. Now Handsome Guy has seen, you know, he'll have a very good idea what this hand represents. I don't know how that helps him, but hey. Well, we'll have to see as we go on into turn four. Dirty Rat going to have to be a consideration now. Just play it immediately, it looks like. Pulls out the Hungry Crab. Bit of a shame for Philippines, but there's definitely worse cards in the deck that it could have pulled out. If it pulled out an Auctioneer and destroyed that straight away, that would have been a huge problem. Although, if Dirty Rat picked, pulled out an Auctioneer here, mm. he, would, he wouldn't have been able to deal with it. I feel Korea had a strong read that the Philippines had nothing in their hand. Sure, uh, but if there was a, an Auctioneer, it wouldn't have been played yet anyway. It wouldn't, but they wouldn't have then burned the coin on... Or they may have done, but they wouldn't have gone into the Jade Blossom and they wanted to keep the coin okay. back, so yeah. they wouldn't have even tried to draw the Jade Blossom, I feel. That's true. Um, I can't help but feel like that was somewhat risky. It may have been, it may have been. As well. It's very hard sometimes to get a feel of what read the player has. Yeah. We, mm -hmm. we can get bits and pieces, but when we can see everything, it's hard to reverse engineer it at times. It's just that, that Wrath for one gave a lot away about their hand. I'm just not sure what. And also, like, South Korea can't wait forever. If you wait forever against Jay Druid, you just lose. Well, that's Whoever true. you are, if you wait forever against Jay Druid, you do not win that's the game. That's true. There is no deck that beats Jay Druid come turn 40. And exactly. Because they've still got cards. Feral. I feel like these two teams should have brought like, decks with actual cards they could play in them because they're just sitting there pressing their hero power button at the moment, both of them. It would be helpful if they drew a card they could actually play, yeah. But we're still in this position. We have been for a long time for Kara Kid. If she can just pick up a Nourish, pick up a Gadgetan Auctioneer, either of those cards, and she'd be golden. Even just uh, Jade Behemoth now would be great. Just something to play on turn six. The As a Drake would be fantastic about now, but <laughs> unfortunately that was only available last weekend in the Wild Tournament. Right. Has anyone seen Sotl and Raven since they got hit by, you know, Sotl's stealing that? Haven't seen it. No. Haven't heard from them. I think no. they've been flattened. Oh my goodness. This hand, I mean, the only upside of this hand is it just can't get any worse. Uh, it can get Earth a lot better. Scales next turn. Again, it can get a lot better. All it would take is just one or two different cards, yeah. and this hand would improve dramatically. But you're just going offensive. Oh, Rage, and deal with the adult peacekeeper. This yeah, I think you have to. South Korea we must be talking a lot about what's in, what's going on in the Philippines' hand. I expect that they're very, very... I think they know that the left-hand card is Innovate. That was kept in the opening mulligan and hasn't been played. It just can't be anything else. Sure. So I think they'll have that one pegged if someone's doing the like the hand reading, which with four of you, you might as well when you're all world class. There's a Jade Behemoth. <coughs> There's a card you can actually play that does something. Yeah, finally getting a thing onto the board, but going very slowly. So Handsome Guy will be wanting to keep this tarot in his hand for a long time. Turning 12-12 Jades into 3-3s three is better than turning 2-2 two two Jades into 3-3s. Three so unless he gets a situation where he's actually winning the game, that'll be saved back for a while. Um, but this Primordial Drake has sorted his hand out now. Sorry, this Curator sorted his hand out. Now he can pretty oh. much do anything to develop. And this Nourish has sorted Kara Cute's hand out. Big smile from her. Picks up the Gadgetan Auctioneer as well. Harrison Jones will be great later on too. Okay, we are ready to get going. Next turn, Kara Cute can play Gadgetan Auctioneer. Innovate, innovate, wild growth. Draw three cards from that. Whee! And we're moving. The turn that you love to play against when you're playing against Druid. Choo choo. I know how everybody enjoys it when they add me and tell me how much they enjoyed the experience after I beat them with it. It's very nicely worded. Thank you. <coughs> I'm known for my pleasant wordiologies. Okay, Harrison Jones yeah. may as well just plonk that on the board. Not going to be destroying any weapons here. Hydrologist to grab a secret. Oh, Getaway Kodo will be great later. So would Redemption, but you don't want to play it on the Silver Hand or crew. I mean, yeah, you don't have to play it now. It gives away a little bit about your hand, but it doesn't matter. Just, yeah. just take something you want later. Uh, Redemption or Getaway Kodo with Tyrion later on. One of the ways you win this match is by getting a lot of Tyrion. Okay, call me crazy. Okay, you're crazy, Dan. I did that exact same thing to Gaskin earlier. Okay. Anyways, call me crazy, but do you ever take Eye for an Eye against a Jade Druid and then just think to yourself, 
Okay, my opponent went hit face until it's 12 12. I'll just let him take 12 12. I think you can do that, but I think this situation doesn't call for it yeah. because the Jades are still small and you can actually get the, get the board now. Yep. Um, so I feel that's what they're going with this. All right, go, go, go. No time wasted here. It's so important that Philippines do this as fast oh, as Oh, interesting. Because they're going to draw so many cards. Starting with the Wild Growth. Okay, sure. Maybe they don't need to play both Innovates. They picked up Gadget and Auctioneer now. They can maybe hold an Innovate back for that next turn. All right. Loads of Innovate action now. Jade Idol. Let's get shuffling. It's their first one, right? So they might choose not to shuffle. There are only nine cards. It will just fill their deck up with them. You don't normally shuffle until you get your second Jade Idol and your second Auctioneer. But actually, yeah, you might be right. They're so low in their deck. And with Gadgets and Auctioneer on the board, right. another one ready to go in hand. I like the idea of shuffling here because then next turn you just keep drawing. Yeah, the other option is just to not play it at all. <laughs> just... Uh, what, so what else do they want to draw? They have to decide right now because if they're shuffling, they want to do it before they right. play the Jade so that they don't draw it again. But nope, looks like they're not going to be shuffling this turn. Yog Sarab! That's what they want to draw, apparently. So the reason they're not shuffling, the reason they're not doing anything, is just get that deck as thin as possible. Because they have the second Auctioneer in hand, it's just going to be better with your mana to do it next turn, I should imagine. Sure. And they also have one generic one they'd love to draw, just so they can put some stuff down. Now, handsome guy going to try and put a stop to this Jade train while he's got the chance. Like you said, Tareem is still sitting there waiting for his chance to turn a bunch of 10, 10, 11, 11 Jade Golems into three threes. That would be great. Then True Silver Champion could make short work of the Gadgets and Auctioneer here. He's got the tools he needs to clear the board. It's just deciding which way he wants to do it. And do you want to? I mean, do you even want to kill Aya? Or do you want to let three damage go face and let Aya kill herself next turn? That's a good point. Card <coughs> is down to 18 already. If everything here went face, she'd be down to eight. If True Silver Champion should be down to four. Of course, you know they've got double. should be down to two. Right. You know they've got double Earth and Scales. You know that one's almost certainly in hand. So you've got to allow for a bit extra, but... I, I feel that it's a good opportunity just to slap some damage into face here. You're right. Like getting rid of the auctioneer was important. There was no. Yeah, you, you can't let that live, yeah. Because yeah. then you know they've got double earthen scales next turn because they're going to have a handful of stuff. Okay. Been the healing. Gonna heal up the spike bridge, the steed, the yep. silver hand recruit. I like this play. Just making sure as much damage as realistically sensible goes face. Yep. And the Philippines don't have the look of a team normally who have Jade Druid against Control Paladin. They look very concerned, all deep in thought. Primordial Drake definitely seems like a solid pickup here. We'll clear away the 2-2 and the 1-1. One, one. And also the, the other 1-1, one, one, as there's a redemption there. And I believe the 1-1 one, one that, that has the Spite Rich Steed on it was what died first. That will just be redeemed as a 1-1. One, one. Right. Uh, Yogg-Saran may be worth considering as well. Yeah, I was thinking they've got to not be too, like, bloody-minded here. If they feel, like, it's easy to go, we're Paladin against, well, we're Druid against Paladin, we don't lose, we don't need to Yogg. Actually, you've got to consider seriously playing this Yogg. They're not playing the Primordial Drake because they would have done that before making that trade. Right. Uh, if they do play the Primordial Drake now, it's just wrong. Yeah, it's just communication error, and they are actually going to. Oh, dear. Could have dealt two damage to the Aya, then traded the Aya in. That 4-4 four four would have been yeah. remained a healthy 4-4. Four four. So that's a slight misplay there from, from Karaki. It is, and it's absolutely a misplay, 100%. One thing that is important, though, is they're running out of time. Yeah. And it's more important to play roughly right than nothing at all. Of course. So there was somebody made a decision that said, look, we don't know yet. Let's just do this. And yes, we'll settle for having a 4-2 instead of a 4-4 if we have to. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's the type of mistake I'd make on the ladder every day. I'm not... <laughs> but it's almost a deliberate mistake. Yeah. It's almost, hey, we know this could be wrong, just do but yeah. we, 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 need, we need time. Just carry on. Yeah. I used to do a lot of um, arena co-ops, and one of the big things that used to go wrong is you'd talk for too long, like oddly it. enough for me, and you would end up not getting anything done, or you'd play two different directions on the turn. There are some very nice directions that South Korea can take this turn, though. Harrison plus Silverhand Recruit trading into Primordial Drake, then play his own Primordial Drake, clear up the whole board, True Silver Champion finishes off the 6-6, six, six. or Consecration would do the same thing. So how much does he want to push damage? Does he want to develop a different minion on the board? Maybe he wants to play Dirty Rat and see if he can hit something else as well. 
Yeah, Tarim's another option because it yeah. allows him to force through three to the face, clear up the board with two of his minions plus his face. Not long to decide. Uh, because they do need to start getting some of this damage through into the Philippines. Otherwise, the Jades have hit six, six or five, five. Um, they are soon going to start to diminish. Gonna go with Tarim, gonna create <laughs> this big board, and I think that means one thing coming up from the Philippines side next turn. Your favourite card? You've been waiting for this for like 13 weeks, haven't you? We've seen, we've seen a few of them. We've seen a few of them. Second Primordial Drake, not going to be enough. Doesn't quite <laughs> Look on Karakute's face says it all. It says, do we have to? I don't want to. Well, Karakute, you put the card in the deck, so... Interesting decision as well, choosing whether to trade first or not. Uh, first of all, the 3-3 protects your Yogg, and secondly, it can get buffed. They do trade it in. Look at Chalk in the background. <laughs> Chalk's praising Yogg in his own special Chalk-esque way. Hunter secret there. All right. Nope. It turns out that healing your 2-2s two for 8 doesn't really do much. Should be plenty to go. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. How many cards are they going to draw, though? Oh, are they going to die? Oh, dear. That's a problem. Chalk <laughs> can't help but find it hilarious. They're going to fatigue for about 4 million points of damage here. That's the problem. That's going to be <laughs> game over right there for Karakyu. Yogg did what Yogg does best. Let's see. Well, okay, all right, calm down. And that is the Philippines eliminated from the tournament <laughs> in the most spectacular and amusing of fashions. I'm sorry, <laughs> Philippines. I really wanted you to do well. But if you were going to get knocked out, then you might as well get knocked out by turning all your mana into minions and then turning all your minions into death and dying from it. That was quite a sight to behold. Minus 17 was the uh, was the health total, Karaki. You're not winning with a minus uh, 17 health total in this game with the current card set. <laughs> to clarify what Lorinda was just saying there, it is now no longer possible for the Philippines to qualify uh, because their game score is, is, is just not good enough for them to get through the third place team. Are now doomed to losing the tournament. But this series is still important for South Korea and like with Hunter Ace in the last series, uh, Philippines are going to want to take South Korea down with them. Next time yeah. Staz on the Rogue versus Flurry on the Mage. Yeah, Philippines already beaten Germany in this tournament so they'll want another big name scalp, especially as, you know, this is likely to happen again next year so probably want to get themselves into as high a position as possible. Uh, things like you don't know how seedings are going to work next year. The, the better you can do, the better that might help you. You never know what's going to happen by winning more matches. They've certainly put on a great show for yeah. us. And this show is not over yet, as, as Staz is going to want to pilot this rogue. I'm expecting a quest rogue. Though apparently, I was talking to Gaskin earlier, there are no miracle rogues in HCT coming out next weekend. It's all about the quest rogue, no surprise. The deck is being nerfed for a reason. Chalk there, texting Yogg, saying what he thinks of it. <laughs> um, so you know what it's called a feedback form, right? Okay, why? It's because of all the food discussion that takes place in the feedback form. Right. And Stas, his favourite food, or his, his recommended Filipino dish, is a curry curry, which I'm sure I've just said horrendously. You know, I did Google it. Curry curry. And it's like oxtail and pork hocks and calves feet. And it's all mixed in with peanut sauce. You can basically use whatever meat you want. Uh, there's peanut sauce. Apparently there's like shrimp paste you can have on the side and stuff. And apparently it's gorgeous. Making me really hungry. Yeah, I know the feeling, right? Now I'm, I'm always really hungry. Now I've got that. a cast on an empty stomach. That's just not fair, Neil. Yeah, well, when your stomach's as big as mine, it's even more unfair. Next game is going to be Quest Rogue versus what looks like a Freeze Mage from Flurry now. We were, we were talking Oh, where's about, Gaskin? We were talking about this matchup with Gaskin last night. We were having a bit of a... poking a bit of fun at him. But well, because he's short and ginger? Because, well, that's why we always poke fun of him. Oh. But uh, we're talking about win rates a lot. And, and you were very much on the side of, yeah, the, the mage takes this. Yeah. Gaskin was less sure. I was somewhere in the middle of the two of you. I, I still think the mage is favoured, but if the quest rogue can complete the quest by turn five, I think the rogue has a good shot. And we do have to just tiptoe carefully into this being freeze mage as well. We've seen a lot of hybrid weirdness from mages recently. Uh, this could still be a freeze mage with mana worms and yeah. such like lying about. Because why not have a mana worm in every deck? Everybody likes a 1-3 that can kill you on turn 4. And uh, George C's freeze mage is now running Medivh the Guardian as well, I believe. Ew. Which is um, a little bit confusing, so... 
tiptoeing around very carefully, as you said. Glacial Shard, not too relevant in this matchup. Igneous Elemental is the, <clears throat> is the big star here for Staz. You've got Backstab in the deck. Um, backstab, Boar, Swash Burglar, Crabs, Tolvia Stone Shaper, Shaper, Shaper? It's a Polymorph, and uh, Tar Creeper. Those cards sort of occupy about three slots between the five or six cards there, right. uh, depending on exactly what you want in your rogue deck. Uh, but a lot of people are starting to bring backstabs back because those pesky igneous elementals that you just can't kill. So you just kill them yourselves. So Freeze Mage doing Freeze Mage things, thinning out the secrets of his deck. By the way, that's a counter spell in this Freeze Mage. Wow, yeah. way to just throw a spanner in the works there, Flurry. We've seen Korea do some pretty strange things over the last couple of weeks. So I'm not too surprised and, and realistically, the, the Medivh Discover Mages have started replacing Ice Barrier with Counterspell. Is there a real reason that you can't do the same thing in Freeze Mage? I mean, honestly, the way Mages develop, you can kind of... If you keep the core Alex Straza Blast You for 15 concept, I think it's becoming more and more apparent you can do what you like. Yeah. Um, whether you want to grab the early game with Mana Worms, whether you want to do traditional Freeze Mage things and just keep it under control. And we are seeing uh, people just start to do a bit of both. And now, why not have a counter spell? If your opponent doesn't know it's there, uh, one of the reasons that Spellbender is the best hand to keep in your mulligan is because it's only in 10% of decks. Yeah. Mimic parts. Okay. Not a bad pickup there. Yeah, not prepping it out, so they're playing a longer game here. Quite often see Mimic Pod prep just so you can play the things straight away, but there wasn't much going on for this deck, so they're waiting. The thing is, time is already running out. I said that if the Rogue wants to have a good chance, they need to have completed the quest and activated it by about turn five. Turn five is coming up next turn, and I don't believe there's going to be any way for them to activate it. That said, Flurry has very little damage and no card draw in his hand. That's true. If he just doesn't ever draw Alex Straza, then he probably doesn't... Yeah, there's no bounce in the bouncy rogue deck, and there's no card draw in the card draw mage deck. So things not quite going to plan. A bit like that Paladin game to start with there, where both players just did nothing for five turns. I mean, and then we just saw a control pile defeat a Jay Druid, so I, I just don't know what to expect now. I mean, South Korea have shown us that they are willing to experiment with stuff. First ice block goes down. That's uh, a lot of safety there with the second ice block in hand, two frost novas, and a blizzard. Flurry <coughs> should be able to survive for a long time this game. Third bouncer gets picked up by Staz too. I would love one of these teams just to turn up and put a couple of silly healing spells in one of these, not necessarily even rogue, but one of the decks that is known not to have any healing where the mage calculates exactly lethal and just, ah, Earthling Farsia. I reckon Miracle GG. Rogue is the best bet for that. Yeah, that's probably the best place for it. I mean, it wouldn't be a great deck in um, tournament play, yeah. because word would get around what's in your deck. But for a one-off HGG game, sure, you can put a tech card in. I think that's what this counter spell is all about. I, I think this is just Freeze Mage with a counter spell for, for effect. I wonder. I'm wondering if this is one of those games where the Philippines may consider using just gadgets and ferrymans to complete the quest. Yeah, I haven't seen many of them for a while, but it, it was a thing at first, and then people got more efficient. But yeah, you, you might be right. Play a Glacial Shard, play a Ferryman, bounce the other. Nope, we're going to be bouncing file fins, okay. Yeah, this is usually the value way to go, but... Well, there's some damage, but still no card draw, still not a lot going on. And this will depend if they have Finance Portal in their deck or not. If they do, they may get tempted to start shooting face on turn 6 or 7 here. And then just block their way to victory. So I wouldn't expect to see Firelands Portal. Actually, um, if they've given the Philippines the idea that this is a this is just a straight up freeze mage, and they play counter spell from the hand that was right. not generated by a primordial glyph, there is a chance that that could hit the secret the, the quests. Another reason that the Philippines kept that preparation back a few well, turns ago, maybe. That's the thing. Unfortunately, it won't actually prevent the quest from activating, as it would just prevent the preparation. There is a Firelands portal. There is, and it looks like a good pickup. Um, it does allow them to start on the face plan without the Alex Straza, which is why it's important, potentially. Oh, this counter spell does fit into the curve just fine this turn. So if they were, yeah, for sure. If they were to take the portal, they'd have 14 damage in hand already. 
uh, with your opponents on 26 with two blocks available and two freezes available that's worth consideration now the thing the counter spell does against good opponents isn't counter the quest although it's been known it what it does is it forces them to play off curve uh -huh. they have to play differently so that they get the quest down so it's still an inconvenience even if you turned it over and said this is a counter spell it is still awkward for your opponents to deal with that's true and this deck is all about buying turns and that's what it does it buys you another turn against row this deck is all about being awkward Definitely one of the ways that you can describe a freeze mage. I thought that's how you could describe George C for a minute. Well, you know. Uh, Philippines still not able to complete the quest just yet. Now, in this discussion we had yesterday about the win rates here, um, I said that I think the rogue has a good chance if they complete the quest before turn five. Right. If they're completing the quest after turn seven, I don't know. This looks... It starts to look really bad. He's given the mage so many extra turns. Yeah, I mean, again, the mage doesn't have that card draw, but I think that if you're the mage now... Oh, there we go. That's probably calculable now. So, obviously, now you want to play turn 9, Alexstrasza. Um, turn 10, hit you for a load. Turn 11, kill you. Yeah. Ideally, you draw your other fireball and kill them on turn 10. Yeah. So, Frost Nova now gets you one turn closer to 9. You'd like that block to be up still on turn 9, otherwise you're in a world of trouble. Then turn 10, your likely plays play your other block and start firing at face. Oh yeah, Blizzard's just a better frost over here because it saves your cheaper spells to fit them in with that burn later. Yeah, it's fine. There's even the potential of just flame striking next turn. I don't think Flurry thinks that Stars is likely <laughs> to finish the quest and activate it next turn. Still only two out of four on the Biofin there. The decision is whether to kill the Ignis Elemental. Right. Normally here against, if this was just a hunter he was playing against, you blizzard and move on with your life. Yeah. But there is the option just to frost Nova, especially if you think you might not ever use both of them anyway, which they might not, the way they're counting the turns. Um, so frost Nova was worthy of consideration there, but yeah, he decides, you know what, I'm just going to kill all your elementals anyway. A third Gadget Zan Ferryman. Ah, kind of regretting not, not doing what I said back on turn three and bouncing Ferrymans now. Yeah? Ah, Balfin's done it just fine. <laughs> okay, let's bounce it, play it again. We can finish the quest, but we're still not able to activate it, and there's still the counter spell to think about. Yeah. But, but Philippines are definitely going to be playing around it now that they know it's not barrier. Yeah, I'm not quite sure how the Philippines get this done. Look, Korea haven't quite got a locked win, but it's getting really close now. Yeah. Especially as we've seen backstab from Stas, so there's a good chance he doesn't play boar. And if he's going to get his board frozen down, he's going to need those charge minions to to set up any chance of winning the game. Right. All right, they're getting there now with this damage. They've got the 15 easily over the two turns required. <coughs> Means they can now afford to actually use one of their minions if they want to as well. I don't think they want to, though. <laughs> Again, it's all about not losing that block until turn nine. I just think they have flame strike. It's just the most straightforward yeah, way of doing it, is. right? Like, you prevent... if So the quest gets complete next turn, but you prevent... 25 damage, yep. smacking you in the face. And you've still got your Frost Novas left over, which buy you time better than anything. Yeah, then you Frost Nova the next turn, you Alex, you deal some damage, you Frost Nova again, and then you win the game. They've seen the backstab as well, right? They've actually saw that got played. I don't think it got Mulugan away. Yeah. So they, they're they aware as well that there's not necessarily as much bounce as usual, although that's a bit of an iffy read. They've also seen three Ferrymen get played, so they're out of the running for more bounce. Okay, they're going to go with a Frost Nova. They can just flame strike next turn. Uh, it's a little bit worse next turn because right. if the quest is activated, then these will become 5-5, five five, so flame strike doesn't activate. Yeah, no Blood Mage in hand or anything, so I would prefer to see the flame strike happen there, but got four of the best players in the world disagree. 
I guess I, there is the argument that the Flurry just doesn't ever play Flame Strike. He can just play <clears throat> right. Alex Straza and then just win the game afterwards. Like, like fussing over this yep. turn and then Alex and the win. The noise on Counterspell is so upsetting. It's like computer says no. That's what it's designed to be. Oh, wow. Fail. Upsetting sound for Flurry is the sound of this quest being activated. Phew. All of the fine it's far more exciting sounding noise. It's There's the 15 ball. damage in hand. There you go. And now it's all trivial, assuming there's no healing. There was a time that Voodoo Doctor was in this deck. There was. It has been experimented with. Eater of Secrets also. Um, Which, by the way, can't be played because they didn't flame strike. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Because Philippines' board is too full to actually drop the Eater of Secrets unless he would have vanished this turn and play it next turn. They, then... they can trade into the Alex Straza, of course, oh, and make yeah. a space. Sorry. But I make that mistake every week. I could just trade it away because they're not frozen next turn. Okay, Alex Straza face. Block gets procced. Hit you for 15. GG. 2-1. Move on. Yeah, Flurry has more tools than he could possibly need now. As long as there's no Eater. Nope, that's a Shadow Step. If there is an Eater, we'll know it, because he'll play Novice Engineer and then bounce it and then play it again and then play the next one. That's what he's going for. Vanish. So there is an Eater of Secrets in this deck, then. I'm guessing. Could be an Eater, yeah. Could be a heal. I mean, you do this anyway, right? It's because you're dead. And it wouldn't matter because there's not enough damage for Philippines to kill South Korea on the board now, anyway. If he plays the Eater of Secrets, it takes up another space on the board. Just keep making inventions until it all stops happening. Looking for all the world like it's going to be 2-1. Now, assuming this does happen, Chalk is up next. Chalk has been a pretty lively character in this tournament, christening the APAC dad as well. And he's got Warlock in his lineup. Hmm. And they're out. And Chalk likes to express himself. I know I know it's a bit of a so, meme, but I hope it is. So we're going into game number four, which means that if they were going to win, they would have had to 3-0. Yeah, yeah. So this Warlock was never going to be an important game. For right. Them. So yeah, what you're saying is making a lot of sense. Just because it's Chalk, right? If it's like somebody boring, like Sottle or somebody, then maybe not so much. Sottle is not boring. He just stole a treasure. This is yeah. true. Yeah. He did indeed steal a treasure. He's not been seen since. I hope he makes it to Shanghai okay in whatever pieces he is left in. Flurry finishes with a flurry, swirls around, gives a bit of a round of applause to himself or his teammates, or maybe to us, and he's very pleased with the situation. Korea, of course, needs to win this by as much as possible because they need to do better than Argentina. I'm sure the round of applause was for us, Neil. I'm, I'm confident. Who wouldn't want to applause us? Yeah. And Neil the Murloc. Well, don't don't let him slide off there. We've already got one miserable Neil. We don't need two. <laughs> so, two games remaining potentially for this series if Philippines can take the next one away. It's going to be Dione versus Chalk. Both of these guys actually have Warlock in their lineup, but I wouldn't. Well, actually, I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to expect anything from Dione. Yeah, I mean Dione may bring Warlock, but they do need to win by as much as possible, so it's less likely. Chalk, on the other hand. It's a bit of a nutter, so it'll be interesting to see what they bring. Ah, oh, feels The speculation bad. is over, and we have been let down yet again. Come on, guys, stop letting us down. It's going to be the Druid and the Warrior. Druid versus Warrior. So it's now, Chalk, the first thing when I found out about Philippines, I spoke to, I spoke to Gia, a Hearthstone mm -hmm. caster over there. First thing she said to me about Chalk was that he's a memer. Yep. He took a long break from Hearthstone, he yep. came back and he memed his way to High Legend with his own brand of Pirate Warrior deck. Now he's playing Warrior today. Who knows, this could be something a little bit different. He was on your team for a while, right? They just vanished. He was. Just, he was just vanished off the face of the earth. And you know, sometimes people need to take a break, right? You need to take a break from Hearthstone and the internet and everything. Right. Yeah, I don't think but he just they... moved into another game. I think he just went into another yeah. time zone or but something. But they always come back. I made that sound way too creepy. <laughs> they always come back. <laughs> All right, let's get this game started. Yeah, quickly, please. It's going to be yes. Jay Druid versus... Ah? Uh? Let's just go with probably pirates, but it could be elemental pirates. 
with you said he made his own brood of I stuff. I mean, I did just say that. I shouldn't really be surprised <laughs> right now. He did it with this. Oh no, he's playing the same thing. Bloodhoof Brave. Yeah, could be a tempo warrior. Seems likely. Which means we might see all sorts of stuff going on here. Casino Zarth and Hemet. I mean, it's been known. Yeah, by by the other man that we see on the screen right now. Yeah, and that's another way to meme if you're chalk, by the way. Hey, Diony brought this deck last week. Yeah. I'd like to play it against him. Sure, let's do this. Not that he knew that he was going to end up against Diony. So that was a Hemet Nazoth deck, right? It was a Hemet Nazoth deck, yes. With Nazoth's first mate in two. Yeah, it started with Nazoth. Wow. Watching the Netherlands, I think it was Tyler, the reactions as that game went. Yeah, out. they just enjoyed it by the end. They, they got okay. hammered and they just enjoyed it okay, by the end. Okay, it's a Pirate Warrior, turn one. Okay, wait, what, what is this deck? Not yep, this is indeed Tempo Warrior. Originally invented, created, discovered, whatever you want to say, by Boar Control. In my opinion, he made the original version way back when, about six, eight months ago now. And then it vanished because it turns out hitting people in the face with pirates is just far more fun. But yeah. it's starting to sneak back as a fringe deck. Dragon Warrior sort of took over with the strength of Alex Strauss as champion, etc., etc. And then, as you said, pirates just, just took over. But I'm very interested to see how this game is going to go. Malkarok has production of quite helpfully put on the board for us. Equips a random weapon when this guy comes down. Could be any weapon currently in the standard rotation. Um, previously, it could have got Cursed Blade, which was a bit of a problem. I don't think there are as many downsides now, but it, it yeah. can get Molten Blade, which is just a 1-1 one -one weapon. You say that like a bad thing. Oh, I don't think there's as many downsides now. No fun for us to laugh at as casters. It can, take, it can get Gore Howl. can get Doom Hammer. can get... Yeah, I mean, it's just a good card that's gone missing because... The idea of pirates is to kill people quickly, and the idea of taunt warriors is to keep playing until they fall asleep. Mm -hmm. And so Malkort just falls in that middle ground that this deck is trying to fill right now. And this is indeed, not necessarily card for card, but it's pretty close to the deck that Dione played last week with those um, hatchlings as well. Will we see a Hemet there? <laughs> that is the question. Will we see Nazoth as well? Diahorn hatchling definitely seems to be a nod towards Nazoth. Yeah, I think Dione's about to work this out. <coughs> Blood to Icarus, pretty good in this situation. Have a taste of your own medicine, Dione. I want to see Dione's face when this Blood to Icar, if it does, which it could well do, gets played on this Frothing Berserker next turn. Yeah. It might not because of Wrath, actually. Yeah, well, that's true. If we see the Wrath take out the Firefly, then it probably will, but it's much more likely, I think, that Dione just hero powers here. He's got a, an okay hand. He's got Jade Behemoth to play next turn. Yeah, and he probably thinks he's up against pirates still. He won't be sure, but we have seen elementals in pirates. Um, all right. We have... Now we definitely won't see the Ickle, by the way, because this is well worth protecting. We've seen Dwayne's full pirate elemental <laughs> deck, but we've also just seen pirate warriors that run Firefly because the card is so versatile and so good in all of these different decks. Okay. So Korea didn't have much to do on turn four. So they haven't got much to do with four mana. I'm not saying you do this. I think I think you just want to avoid armor at pass. That's why I'm looking at or flame elemental armor at pass. But if you did double blood your frothing really and it like gets wrathed, thing. yeah, you get two two twos and you waste two of their mana. But I don't think they're going to do it. I've got to say I really like the look of that play. You develop such a big board. It's a shame to be using it on your own minion and not on your opponent. Yeah, they're going to do it this way. Plays into swipe a little bit. This is just better because it still buffs the frothing. I'm just being stupid. Yeah, but it does play into <coughs> swipe, right? Like now if, this, if the frothing gets swiped, then the one, two also gets to Sure. So many choices. Maybe it is just better. They're not sure, which is good because it means that we're not being completely idiotic here at this point. Time to make the decision though, Chalk. Blood if you do it once, you do it twice, right? I think so. <laughs> <laughs> do something, Chalk, damn you! Now we're just going to do it the yeah. once on the frothing, okay. <laughs> Unfortunately, that does play directly into the wrath, but it does slow Dione's turn down. Look at Dione's face, though. He, he gave a little laugh there. And that is what I was saying about the four mana. We know there wasn't a four mana drop right. on turn four. They have since um, nourished or something, but they're aware that if they wrath here, they can't do much else. Nope. Unless they've drawn a Jade Spirit in the meantime, which they haven't. 
No, exactly. As, as you spotted it, Chalk spotted it, and now Wrath is going to have to deal with that frothing berserker. It's easy for me to spot it. I can see the hand, though. To yeah. be fair, Chalk can't. Jade Behemoth is that worth considering? Definitely is. Dead. I think <sighs> it's just a little bit scary because that frothing berserker could what? deal a lot of damage. We can see there's a Cork on Elite in Chalk's hand. Just he could trade everything into the Jade Behemoth and then go face with the frothing berserker. Yeah. I was just saying yeah like that because there's so many good choices here. And this is why Donny's taking so long over an apparently obvious play as well because he knows there's a lot of good choices likely there. He was playing this deck last week. Or at least a very similar variant of it. Yeah, well worked out there by Chalk. Basically making South Korea miss a turn. Yeah. Um, on the downside, of course, it does mean that the frothing is dead, but it would have been dead anyway to the same play because you just hero power and then Wrath then. Right. But now Chalk able to just keep going. Cork right. and Elite going to just smack an additional four damage into the face along with the minions already around. Dione heavily on the defensive here. Looks like he's, his only play is Jade Behemoth. Swipe now gets picked up a little bit late. A little bit late. Swipe plus hero power will deal with almost everything. But again, I think Jade Behemoth might just be better. Yeah, Jade Behemoth seems a little bit better this time around as well because the punish is just so much less. Yeah, you know, they trade the whole board into it. Yeah, okay, go for it. Whereas last time it was like, oh, we might get smashed in the face by the world's biggest frothing berserker. Right. Gonna still play, I guess, the slightly right. safer play. Swipe, deal with the slime there. Next turn, Primordial Drake is a thing. And that's that feels like a... A sturdier body. It feels like a safer play. At least the Trailblazer. At least the Trailblazer. I'll play that with Hemet because you destroy the pack. Yeah, you play it after you play your Hemet, of course. And then you think your deck out and then you draw the pack really quickly. Right. I don't know if that's how it works. It's like, but... a, it's like a less efficient Shadow Visions with the Elise pack. <coughs> no, Dione is now completely and utterly mind boggled, so I don't think he has any idea what's going on, even though he was playing similar last week. He's, He's... mind boggled, I'm mind boggled. And I'm always mind boggled, so it's absolutely fine. Uh, Dione's expressions resembling those of Tyler's last week. Right. <laughs> it's like he's learned. Like we said, taste of his own medicine. Dione. Uh, been around for a long time. He won uh, the HTC, HCT 2016 Winter Pacific Championship, beating Handsome Guy, his teammate in the Hudson Global Games. Oh, Handsome Guy got beat at something. Oh, yeah, in the one final that he lost yeah. before he won the next two. Yeah. Sure, why not? Pretty ridiculous team, South Korea. No wonder Raven picked them. Well, unpunished. I mean... Yeah, he's just like, oh, let's just go for the guys who've got three world championship players. Yeah, I mean... It's not brave, is it? You're t <laughs> that's true, that's true. Well, you went for a team that were like 7-0 and or something. Our team, my team were 2-0 and when I picked them. Okay. That was my and my team, one of my teams has been eliminated just now. So that was my blood doing that one. But yeah, you've still got Greece. Greece looking a bit dodgy. Norway looking like they're out. So Gaskin's pick. Canada, Rob Wing's pick. Looking like they're out too. It's all started to fall apart, really. So Ra Raven certainly unpunished for picking South Korea. Meanwhile, the Philippines are developing a huge board. This is what Tempo Warrior did in the olden days. This is what presumably it still does now. Back in your day. Is it just plays a value pick on every single turn. Yeah, and Malkarok looks like it's going to fit that turn seven very nicely. Let's hope for an Arcanite Reaper, Gladiator's Longbow, something that deals five damage. Oh, How about seven. seven damage? Seven works too. Now Dione's not looking too happy. Oh boy. That's just a gore howl. <laughs> uh, I wish we could see Chalk. I don't, I, he's there in the room with the rest of the Philippines. Yeah, I'd love to see some reactions. He's definitely been working out. Yeah, he has. It's true. It's quite a tan he got too. <laughs> All right. South Korea trying to get to that point of the game where their Jades take over, but they've just made a 2-2 two, two and a 3-3. Three, three. That's not taking over. Yeah, they need to get a little bit more of a handle on this game. When Aya comes down, things will start to look a little bit brighter for right. them. But King Marsh! Why not? Chalk is running King Marsh. There he is. We can see him now. So presumably that gets played with Whirlwind. 
Okay. Uh, yeah. And then you just wipe out a load of jades at some point. Why not? Um, why not indeed? Battle Rage now seems very solid. Let's draw two more cards. I want to see more of this deck, to be quite honest. Cool Chrono Elite. Yep. All right. Ravager Ghoul kind of works with King Mosh over two turns. Yeah, that's true. If you're desperate. It deals with a lot of big jades, I guess. <laughs> Chalks just find this incredibly amusing, as I must admit, am I. How does Dione come forwards and like just get this board back? Is is to, is this the Aya turn? Gets a four four when the, when it dies. Gets a five five. Is that too slow though? You can wrath away the six two. You get hit in the face for like how big is the weapon now? Five one. I think you just lose if you play Aya. You have to earth the scales like a three three or your Aya to get. Well, well you can you can Aya and wrath away <coughs> the six two. Sure. All right. Ravaging Ghoul plus the weapon is 10-11. Yes. Yeah, it's getting close, though. It is it? getting close, but you're right. They're going to have to do that. And it, 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 if Dany wants to play it really safe, he can, he can Earthen Scales up the 5-3. Uh, hang on. How much is this with the Ravaging Ghoul? 5, 10, 11, 15? Yeah. Yeah, that's right. And they've got the Acolyte of Pain as well if they want to just draw loads of cards and gain loads of armor. Hit... They won't go face with a Gore Howl, obviously, if that if they break that play. But they can hit for face for five with the... Let the blah, blah, blah. The Blood Hoof Defender. Yeah. Brave. Brave Defender. Brave. He's brave and he defends things. I don't know what to call him. You're not wrong. Armor. Cards. Sean of the Dino Hatchling. That's not the, uh, the most game-changing card draw there, but... Uh, no surprise to see the Gorehow going face. Sure, Armor Smith can go in. Why not get the value tray? Yeah, the little bit of armor from these Whirlwind here as well has just allowed this Gorehow to not be too punishing for Chalk. If he had taken all of this damage all game with no armor gain, he'd just start to be looking a bit awkward himself. But look at this board. It's called Tempo Warrior. This is how it works. You just keep the tempo going all the way through the game. Okay. So, I think it's just go time. Jade Behemoth feels safer, but with Auctioneer, you can play Auctioneer, draw three cards, then you can Earthen Scales too. Oh, that only disagrees. He wants to play it really safe. He's so close to dying. I'm not sure this makes that much difference to that, though. <clears throat> Depends how much work this one taunt can do, really. Um, enough for now, I guess. Yeah. So, oh. Acolyte can trade and then King Mosh can do Yeah. It. And Mosh is huge. It's not just destroying things. It's actually just it's a, a nine, big thing. It's a 9-7, right? I think. Uh, I've got to admit, I haven't played the card myself. Disappointing. Uh, yeah, gaining 7 armor as well. That shows how scared they are of this situation. And Auctioneer plus Wild Growth on its own is a little hand refill, so that's... Uh, that's fine. No reason to hold on to the Earthen Scales, really. So... They can clear if they want to, right? They trade in the Gorehound and the Ghoul into the 3-6, trade in the Acolyte, trade in the Corker. They don't, I don't think they want to do that, but they can. They get a clear board with a King Mosh on it. So they start by trading in the Acolyte, I think, before making... Oh, wait. Yeah, it's messy. Uh, like, if you want to do it, if you want to clear, it's really ugly looking. Yeah. But you do clear. Okay, well, you could just leave the 5-5 five, five out. Yeah, you might do that. Trade the Acolyte into the 7-7, seven, seven, then and, play. And see where you are as well. You just get, just yeah. draw your card and see what's happening. Because okay. it must be tempting just to... Uh, yeah, you just mosh. Yep, I don't mind you mosh at all here. You, uh, you get rid of the one minion that can contest this. I think I needed about 37 mana for my play as well. Ah. Which should please everybody yeah, that, watching. That, that'd be a problem. Oh, two wild growths. All right, Dainey can pretty much draw the rest of his deck, though. Could do with Innovate, though. Without Innovate, this isn't going to be the best. Our rage isn't playable. I guess it's another Wrath here would be fine. Swipe, not good enough. One more chance. Yeah, now he needs Spirit, no stuff to happen. I don't know if there's stuff happening enough. Now he needs Innovate and, and Wrath here. Again, he's got three chances. Nourish not going to do anything right now. Uh, this is going to be really close because the Philippines next turn is looking really powerful. That's still not Innovate. So, a whole bunch of things you can do this turn. 
I'm always tempted to just say, let's watch what happens, because a huge frothing berserker is one of the options. He's got 16 damage, and Diane has 20 health, so it's not quite lethal just yet. You're right, huge frothing berserker is worth considering. Chalk probably needs to get rid of that Gadgetzan Auctioneer. In fact, probably needs to <coughs> clear away everything, actually. So, Does he? So let's see. Drop the Frothing. So trade choices. the 9-7 into the 4-4. Trade the Corcoran into the 5-4. I think that sets up the best boards. The other choice, but I don't think it works out for him, but he's got to try and calculate it, is whether he can just stick a Corcoran behind a dialing ha dire horn hatchling and okay. stick everything in the face and say, Druid, you don't have much removal. You have a whole bunch of jades. They're going to be too slow. You've used both of your taunts. We've seen one Earthen Scales, right? Yeah, I think they have to get rid of the Auctioneer. I'm That's almost sure they do. Yeah. Earthen but. Scales with Gadgetan Auctioneer is just it. Wow. And obviously, the, the jades ramping up is such a strong combination. I got a move. They might just trade the 4 3 into the Gadgetan and stick everything else face. Yeah, okay. Making obvious plays. I like it. Execute, sure. Keeping the 9 7. Yeah, just a whole bunch of damage. Deal with that. Second Jade Idol. So Feral Rage is armor gain. Swipe deals with the frothing. It's just about enough to survive for now, I think. Gotta survive and get rid of this 9 7, though. How much? You've got two turns to kill it. Our Jades are on 7 7, so nourishing into an <coughs> Earth Scales is 8 armor. This is 8 armor, too. Yeah, this is going to make some big old jades. That's a way to deal with stuff. Got to think about this. Did he shuffle? I don't think he did. He needs the tempo. But if he shuffles, if he, yeah. He just doesn't win if he shuffles, right? He yeah. needs to win in the next five turns by just creating huge minions. There's the whirlwind that goes with the king marsh you were talking about earlier. Yep. No way of getting rid of these minions without trading. Can only defend against one of them with a hatchling. That would have been better too, because while we're hitting, <coughs> hitting the acolyte, acolyte draws a card, acolyte then trades in, draws another card, and then King Mark. Oh, it would have been ridiculous. It would have been so a, a significantly choices. better play. But Chalk just can't quite cross the finish line after all of this. I think that Dione's going to take this. And I think you are right. You're in a fantastic spot now. Uh, depends what's on the top of Philippines' deck as well. Yep. I mean, we've seen how much damage this deck can put out. There might be a natural Gore Howl in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah there, there might be an Arcanite Reaper that could get through. Grom with Whirlwind, right? There could well be a Grom with Whirlwind, yeah. South Korea, though, are able to nourish into probably an Earthen Scales. They can Jade Spirit and then sure. gain 10 armor with that Earthen Scales. I believe they've only used up one so far. Yeah, they've still got AJ Spirit. I think that's good. They know the contents of their deck exactly. I mean, you always do. With five cards there, if you can start planning, is what I mean. <laughs> On the verge of a 3-1 victory. Well worth taking their time over. How are we making these trades? 8-8 eight, eight goes into 3-6. 7 7 goes into 9-6, the way I see it. I'm trying to work out if you need to nourish. Maybe they're afraid of fatigue. Because they haven't shuffled. <coughs> That's the other problem, yeah. I think working a lot of things out in this game, there's so much going on. No earthen scales, but Feral Rage is going to be handy too. That is risky. Yeah, I don't like it. Because I think you're right, I think Grom lives in this deck. All right, Chalk has an out for lethal. Now Gromash would do it. That's not it. It's not it. And that's probably going to be his final chance to draw it, too. Right, because they will Feral Rage or Primordial Drake, each of which will stop the board next turn. Uh, yeah, and, and we're just getting to lethal, I think. Uh, chalk armor's up, but Feral Rage is only going to be a choice. few off lethal. 24 damage, I think. So, Chalk will, uh, will be on 26 health. Yeah. All a bit sad. Well, that's one way to deal with the Jade Golem. Uh, 
He does armor up, but it's looking like a formality. Uh, Primordial Drake will just make sure that Grom can't kill them. The scales will make sure that Grom can't kill them. There it is. What a way to end the game now. I just like Primordial Drake plus Earthen Scales here. Maybe just Feral Rage plus Earthen Scales too. I guess Primordial Drake isn't necessary. Yeah, and the Philippines have provided us with a lot of entertainment and color in this event, but they are finally going to fall at this round of 24. Um, struggling when it came to this incredibly tough group with Argentina, Korea and the Netherlands in it. Uh, your most countries are going to be fourth best in that group. They've definitely, as you say, they've definitely added a lot of colour. They've been entertaining to watch right from the very beginning. It's nice to see Chalk sending them out in style. Daihon Matriarch not going to do enough to allow them to survive. Ah. Hang on, just about is enough to allow them to survive. Just about. Yeah, I mean, they're looking to hit with a Grom, I guess, in fatigue. I don't know. Well but yeah. The well play goes out. My play out of cards. <laughs> your Acer, I'm not going to do much at all right now. It's not. You're right. What can they draw then, the Philippines? Nothing, I think. The menagerie is for guests only. Well, Dione absolutely can't draw anything. <laughs> and of course, they were forced into playing that Ida. If they hadn't done it, they would have lost this game, I think. So can the Philippines find removal oh. for enough things? Angoro pack! We'd forgotten about the pack. <laughs> Go, <laughs> Philippines, guy. I've ridden you off. Come on. <laughs> what can you do? Lyra? That's not going to do anything. McCaw. <laughs> Lyra into Whirlwind Ma into... Just McCaw for the beast that deals 26 damage. Yeah, that'll do it. Oh. Sad boys. They've got so many options. McCaw fetches things. Stonehill Defender fetches things. Stone Chamber sits there, gets in the way. Lyra fetches extra cards. This is a decent pack, actually. It's a very strong pack. If only Chalk had more time to utilize it. How well do you know your random effects? Which one gives you the best chance of getting something that gets rid of this? You get an execute, it's not good enough. Do any of them give you any chance of doing this? No, you can't get an execute from Lyra, you can only get pre-spells. Oh, it is actually pre-spells, yeah, of course. So you can get Shadow Word Death, it's the same thing. Yeah, just a little bit more expensive. Too expensive, in fact, I think. Oh, just about good enough to deal with the temporary. And Chalk, taking it into his own hands, jumps onto the Curator and gives up and Dione and Korea will have a very, very, very strong chance of going to the next round. If Relox's numbers are correct, and they usually are, that will be enough even if the maths goes against them in the other game. Yeah, it's just when you've got two wins in this stage of the Hearthstone Global Games, most of the time you're through regardless of game score. Yeah, two most wins and time. plus two game difference, which is more than enough. They've got plus three. Um, is the number that Redux came up with. So they're game clear of his 99.9% .9 line. Unless something goes horribly wrong, which it shouldn't. This should be absolutely fine. Damn. Philippines, it's very disappointing to see, but I've enjoyed watching them and I wish them very much good luck in the future. But let's take one last look at how the series went. Waiting Moon got off to a good start with his Paladin against Kranich's Dragon Priest, but ultimately, that, that, that was all Philippines managed to do. Yeah, and they, you can see how they stack their lineup for that 3 0 there. The Priest, the Hunter, and the Warlock all down at the bottom out of the 3 0 range. Uh, that's what these teams have to do when they fall behind. Uh, that makes them predictable, of course. So, no surprise there that it was easily picked off by Korea. Let's take a look at how that game did go. Some of the highlights here. Back to the very first game, feels like quite a long time ago. This was a long it game. It was quite a long time ago, yeah. Um, the Dragonfire Potion leaving just four guys on the board, and then the second Dragonfire Potion was used almost immediately after just to pop the Divine Shield on the Tyrion. Yep, this game was another cumbersome game. Both sides getting off to really slow starts. Ended up with the Druid deck having to try to yog, but despite Chalk getting excited there, this was doomed to fail. Yep, doomed to fail. Very well put. Lay on hands didn't help that either. That started the uh, the card draw going, and then immediately after, this doom ended up 
leaving Kara Cute on minus 17 health once fatigue damage had done its thing. Chalk having to get out of the way there, because he realizes they've been eliminated from the tournament and all he can do is laugh. Yeah. And the others will take a second to go, oh, we're out, now we can laugh. Whereas Chalk just instantly bursts into his damage. Chalk just, yeah, finding the hilarity of the situation, but it's hard not to right here. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you knew you were up against it, you might as well go out in style. <laughs> Handsome guy was certainly enjoying it. And now the, uh, the next game was the Freeze Mage being able to do its thing. He did run a counter spell, which was yep. a little bit unusual, but everything else seemed pretty regular. Yeah, and what wasn't regular is the Philippines couldn't even get into it at all in that game. They just didn't get anything out of it. And finally, Chalk's Warrior, Chalk's Tempo, Malkarok, Elise Warrior, Almost got through. The Gore Howl was huge from the Malkarok. Almost got there with the damage. Even had one turn where if he drew Gromash, which I imagine he was running, he would have picked up the lethal, but unfortunately, he didn't quite get there. And Korea takes it away. And the Philippines just have to chalk it up to experience. Let's take a look for one last time at Group C. There you go, South Korea, two and one. Feeling pretty good about things. Yeah. They're going to want Netherlands to win their next game. They are, but again, they should get through as a third place qualifier, whatever happens. Right, well, next up, I believe it's going to be China versus Singapore. It is. Lorinda and Gaskin will be bringing you that one. Don't go anywhere, we'll be right back. We're almost there. Quiet down, everyone. This is not like any of our previous expeditions. This will be far more ambitious. We're stepping into a land of primordial wonder. Infused with astonishing elemental energies. The plant life here holds very unusual properties. So don't touch anything. And while you may be excited to see the local fauna, you might want to make sure they don't see you. Because their powers of adaptation are devastating. Make no mistake. We will be tested at every turn. But if we stay on our guard, we might just survive. Now then, are you ready? Then let's journey into Ongoro Crater. 